Hey guys, hi, welcome back to the second session on lipid metabolism. On uh, we have just started with the introduction of lipid in the last class, and uh, we uh, broke away at uh, the at uh, saturated and un, at the definition of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids and their examples. And in this class, we are going to start with cis and trans fatty acids. Okay, let me just check if I'm visible and audible to all of you, and then we'll begin. Let me just check if my voice is clear and if the live stream has started. Okay, great. So I'm your educator for biochemistry. I'm Dr. Shivanki Shukla. We are running a course called Focus MBBS Prof 1 and MBBS Prof 2. This is specially dedicated to MBBS Prof 1 and 2 students as the name suggests. This channel, Unacademy Future Doctors, is also specially dedicated to Prof 1 and Prof 2 students in MBBS. And in the focus series, what we are going to do is we are going to focus on understanding, comprehension and developing a comprehensive learning, method, methodical comprehensive learning approach. Okay. So this uh, approach is going to develop your skills in application in medicine and it is going to be, uh, uh, take you a long way in it is going to help you in your career in medicine even when you become a clinician. This kind of approach has to be developed as early as possible. So we from our experience are helping you develop this even as you enter the medical college. All right. So, uh, most of you are my regular students and you would know I am Dr. Shivangi Shukla. And uh, let me just brief you through to the uh, uh, about the different types of subscriptions available on Unacademy for NEET PG. Uh, the plus subscription uh, gives you access to live as well as recorded lectures from uh, top educators in the field of medicine across the country. You can access their live quizzes uh, and you can uh, make use of the state of the art technologies like raise your hand feature and uh, live uh, chat comment section during the session. Okay, and it will give you a simulated classroom kind of environment. Okay, so this virtual learning is uh, it gives it, it is learning th from the comfort of your home, but there is no disadvantage here because all the uh, facilities, all the important, um, all what, whatever you get to learn in physical setup, all of them we are trying and providing in the virtual scenario as well. Okay. The iconic subscription comes with access to uh, resources from Prep Ladder as well. Therefore, it is rightly termed best from two of the best. Now, uh, whenever you are trying uh, to take the subscription, do not forget to put in the educator code here on this interface that is D-R-S-H-U-K-L-A. You have to download the Unacademy app and then it, uh, you can choose whichever subscription you want to whether it's plus or iconic and then you can choose the duration for which you want the subscription. However, please do not forget to put in the educator code D-R-S-H-U-K-L-A. This code is going to fetch you 22% discount if you put it before tonight because this is on the occasion of the new year 2022. We have extended the normal 10% discount with the educator code to 22%. Okay, so for 12 months, one full year plus subscription, you are getting just at 21,450 if you put in the educator code DRSHUKLA before midnight tonight so if you are planning on taking the subscription it is my earnest advice to you guys to please uh, take the subscription before 12 p 12 a.m midnight tonight because you'll save on a lot of money okay and 21,450 is very less compared to the resources that you're getting for the entire year okay all right so we have discussed about lipids, we have discussed about the classification of lipids, how lipids can be classified into simple and complex in the last class. This is what we read. Okay, and then we read about the definition of fatty acids. What are fatty acids? Fatty acids are aliphatic carboxylic acids. They can be either free or esterified. Esterified fatty acids can be either 
saturated or unsaturated saturated fatty acids contain no double bonds okay and unsaturated fatty acids will contain one or more double bonds one double bond containing unsaturated fatty acids are called mono unsaturated fatty acids two or more double bonds containing fatty acids are called polyunsaturated fatty acids a special group is called icosanoids they are 20 carbon containing unsaturated fatty acids that lead to the formation of important mediators in our body like prostaglandins prostacyclins thromboxane a2 like like uh, leukotrienes lipoxins okay next what we are going to study about is cis and trans fatty acids now cis and trans isomers you would be knowing about all of you would be knowing about cis and trans isomers okay now in fatty acids what happens is in uh, unsaturated fatty acids there are cis and trans uh, isomers what are these isomers? Which type of isomers? Geometric isomers. Geometric isomers because the geometric configuration, the geometric configuration about the double bonds is different. Okay, the configuration around the double bonds is different in these. Okay, so they will be present in, in those fatty acids containing double bond. What are these fatty acids? Saturated or, un, or unsaturated? Saturated have no double bonds. So, cis and trans will be present in unsaturated fatty acids. Okay. Cis and trans fatty acids are a type of unsaturated fatty acids. Always remember. Okay. This has been asked in MCQs a lot of times. Saturated fatty acids do not contain any double bonds. Unsaturated fatty acids contain one or more double bonds. So, the arrangement of atoms about the double bonds is different in cis and in trans. Okay. What happens is, so they are what? Geometric isomers because the geometric configuration of these two compounds is different. Although the chemical composition is the same, the molecular formula is the same. Only the geometrical structure of these compounds is different. Always remember, what are geometric isomers? The molecular formula is the same for cis and trans fatty acids, but their geometric configuration about the double bonds is different. Understood? Now, the double bond does not allow any rotation. Okay, so therefore the structure about the double bond is fixed. It can rotate in the about the single bonds that it has. But the double bond does not allow, is stronger. Double bond is stronger than a single bond. So, double bond does not allow any rotation. Okay. Which double bond characteristic did we read yesterday when we were reading about proteins, the structure of proteins? We have read about something that has a partial double bond character. What is this bond and tell me how does it affect the structure of protein? This is another question I want you guys to answer. We have covered this in our session yesterday, structure of protein. In the fourth session, structure of protein yesterday. If you haven't attended, you can go back and attend that. And I need the answer in the comment section. I'm not going to spoon feed you time and again every day. No, you have to be interactive because it is then only that you can uh, understand and remember. Okay, so what is the characteristic of double bond, the partial double bond characteristic of a particular bond we have read yesterday and how does the partial double bond characteristic of the structure of protein, you have to mention both of this in the comment section. Okay, if you don't remember, you can go back and attend that session. It is available on this channel itself. Okay, now. If the acyl chains are on the same side of the double bond, it is called cis fatty acid, cis unsaturated fatty acid. But if the acyl chains are on opposite side of the double bond, it is called trans unsaturated fatty acid. What is it called? Trans. Trans means transverse. Transverse. So on opposite sides. Okay. Trans river bank. What is this trans river bank? That means on the opposite side. So trans means opposite side. Okay. Cis means on the same side. Okay. 
cis and trans we all we also use for river banks okay so all of you this is from normal english so you can go you can um, uh, conclude you can uh, associate this from that also okay so cis uh, fatty acid are those cis fatty acids are those that have acyl chains on the same side of the double bond whereas trans fatty acids have acyl chains on opposite side of the double bond okay so a, a fatty acid containing the same molecular formula can be cis that is oleic acid or trans that is elidic acid okay so both oleic and elidic acids are structures of the same molecular formula but this one is cis and this one is trans unsaturated fatty acid got it now i'll i'll show you here also what happens is since cis fatty acids are present on the same side they are also bent at the double bond the double bond does not allow any rotation the double bond will not be will not bend because it is very strong so about this double at this double bond there will be bending you see this structure is bent at around 120 degrees this is the cis structure you have both the acyl groups this is the acyl chain it is present on this side and this acyl chain is also present on the left side only this side only whereas the trans chain is straight the trans chain is straight there is no bending and you see this is present on the left side and this is present on the right side understood so if this is oleic acid this one is elidic acid or whatever whatever if it will change according to the number of carbon atoms understood or not the difference between cis and trans okay now uh, trans fatty acids it is very very important to read about the clinical application of trans fatty acids trans fatty acids are etherogenic they are etherogenic okay what do they cause they are they are causative for a lot of cardio uh, cardiological ill effects that is myocardial infarction and uh, cardiomyopathies and uh, atherosclerosis trans fatty acids lead to metabolic syndrome obesity okay metabolic syndrome diabetes hypertension cancer trans fatty acids are bad for health okay they are bad for health therefore what is advised is to you increase the consumption of cis fatty acids and to decrease the consumption of trans fatty acids and a lot of uh, new um, uh, uh, newer advancements in technology have been made to eliminate trans fatty acids from the from the fats to eliminate trans fatty acids from the fats okay and trans fatty acids uh, usually form when when you reheat oil or fats okay upon reheating oil or fats the majority of the fatty acids that remain are trans fatty acids okay therefore reheating of oils is discouraged understood so you can be asked a question why is reheating of fats or oils discouraged by the who okay then your answer will be because it produces trans fats trans fatty acids what are trans fatty acids they are fatty acids unsaturated uh, they are unsaturated uh, fatty acids containing R groups, acyl groups arranged on opposite sides about the double bond and they uh, are straight chains, straight, they contain a straight chain about the double bonds, about the double bond and they are atherogenic, they produce ill effects related to the heart, to the metabolism, to uh, the arteries and they lead, lead to production of metabolic syndrome they lead to uh, obesity cancer a lot of uh, ill effects in the body on the health therefore their consumption should be discouraged all right understood
I'll give you a second or two to uh, put in any doubts if you have. Very, very important to read about cis and trans fatty acids. You should know how to draw the structure, how cis structure is bent at around 120 degree about the double bond and the double bond, how the trans structure is straight, how the acyl groups are present on opposite sides about the double bond in trans, how they are present on the same side in cis. Okay, same same starts with sir, same syllable. Sis is also the same sir syllable. So you can remember same sis. Okay. All right. Now, uh, shall we go further? Okay. Now, what are tra now we'll read about read a few uh, 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 lines. We'll read about what different types of fat molecules are. Okay, triacylglycerols. We have read about them in our super fast series. Triacylglycerols are the storage form of fats inside our body. When we eat fats, when we take in fats, it is in the form of triacylglycerols only. Okay, the fat present in animal food and present in uh, plants. It is in the form of triacylglycerol only. Then it is digested into free fatty acids. It is then oxidized through beta oxidation. Whatever is utilized for energy production is utilized. The excess amount is stored in the form of triacylglycerol only. So the triacylglycerol that is stored in our body is not the same that we have ingested. Okay. The triacylglycerol has been formed in our body endogenously. Okay. What are triacylglycerols? They are esters of trihydric alcohol that is glycerol and fatty acid. Okay. Glycerol is a trihydric alcohol. Monohydric alcohol forms waxes. Remember, high molecular weight containing monohydric alcohol forms waxes. Okay. Now, if they contain just one fatty acid, then it will be monoacylglycerol. If two fatty acids are present, it will be diacylglycerol. If all the three uh, alcohols, if all the three uh, uh, Balances here are satisfied by the three fatty acids, then it will be triacylglycerol. How? This is one fatty acid, this is the other fatty acid, and this is the third fatty acid. Okay? Alright? What are these? This is trihydric alcohol. One, two, three. Trihydric alcohol will have. If suppose this one did not have a fatty acid, if suppose this one did not have a fatty acid, it will be monoacylglycerol. Uh, mono if both of these will have a fatty acid, it, it did not have a fatty acid, then it will be diacylglycerol. Now, since it is containing three fatty acids, it is called triacylglycerol. Understood or not? Okay. Understood? Now, these two carbons are different. You will, you must be thinking that this they, CH2O, COO, R1, CH2O, COO, R3, both of them, both of these contain similar structure, but they are different. Okay, these two, it is very, very important. And they are differently recognized by different enzymes also. Okay, so if you have to phosphorylate it, then the phosphorylating enzyme will consider both of them differently. Okay. Alright. It is not that they can be phosphorylated interchangeably. No. Because they are two different carbons. Understood? Alright. So this was about triacylglycerols. Now we will read about phospholipids. We are just reading about the definitions. So that whenever you come across them later on in the chapter of metabolism, you know what I am talking about. It is not like, it is not some Greek term, triacylglycerol. When I, when I take the name triacylglycerol, then you are left scratching your head as to what is triacylglycerol. Have I heard of it before? What in the, uh, what on earth is this compound? Is it a lipid? Is it a fat molecule? What is it? Okay. So, triacylglycerol will be what? A complex lipid or a simple lipid? 
This is another question for you guys. Tell me, triacylglycerol, is it a complex lipid or a simple lipid? You have to tell me in the chat section. Next, go through the definition of simple and complex lipid and then you will know. Okay, what is the definition of simple lipid? What is the definition of complex lipid? And then you then you will know what triacylglycerol is. Okay, now phospholipids. Okay, what is a phospholipid? Phospholipid contains phosphatidic acid along with uh, glycerol along with alcohol and fatty acid. It will have a derivative of phosphatidic acid along with fatty acid and alcohol. Okay, here what happens in phosphatidic acid? Phosphate is esterified with OH group of a suitable alcohol. This suitable alcohol can be anything. Any alcohol, glycerol, sphingosine, whatever. Okay, if it is glycerol, it will be glycerophospholipid. Okay, uh, if it is uh, sphingosine, then it will be uh, phosphosphingolipid. Okay, understood. Ne what are phosphatidyl colines? Phosphatidyl colines. What will be the, what will be these? It will contain phosphatidic acid. And it will contain choline, okay. It will contain phosphatidic phosphatidyl acid. It will contain choline. It will contain fatty acid, and it will contain alcohol, okay. Phosphatidyl choline is also called lecithin. Where? Why is it important? Where have you heard of this? Dipalmetoyl phosphatidyl Choline. What is this molecule? Dipalmetoyl lecithin. What is this molecule? This is present in the pulmonary surfactant. Pulmonary surfactant. This surfactant molecule helps to <clears throat> prevent the alveoli from collapsing. When this pulmonary surfactant is not produced by type 2 pneumocytes, then the infant will suffer from acute respiratory distress, distress syndrome. Okay, this occurs in premature infants because their lungs are not developed enough to secrete the pulmonary surfactant. Okay, the pulmonary surfactant is secreted by the type two pneumocytes in the lungs, in the alveoli and it prevents acute respiratory distress, distress syndrome. Okay. What is phosphatidyl ethanol amine? It is also called kephalin. It contains derivative of phosphatic acid along with ethanol amine along with fatty acid and an alcohol. What is phosphatidyl serine? It contains a serine molecule. Serine, what is serine? Serine is an amino acid, okay? Serine, serine is formed from oxidation, transamination and dephosphorylation. Remember, we read about the formation of serine. Serine is formed from OTD. What was the mnemonic? Cereals are available on OTT platform. So, serine is formed by OTD. Hi, Nikhil Journal. Uh, serine is formed from the process OTD, oxidation, transamination, dephosphorylation. You can go back to the chapter of synthesis of amino acids. That was the second or the third session on protein metabolism that we took yesterday or day before yesterday. And you can revise this. Okay. Phosphatidyl serine is an important mediator of apoptosis. It is involved in apoptosis. What is apoptosis? It is programmed cell death okay this you'll read in pathology okay next phosphatidyl inositol it is extremely important this molecule produces it it breaks down to produce diacylglycerol diacylglycerol that is a import that is an important second messenger in our body is an important second messenger in our body, diacylglycerol, and 
ट्राइफोसोटोल आइनोसिटोल ट्राइफोसफेट डाइसाइल ग्लिसरोल एंड आइनोसिटोल ट्राइफोसफेट दीज टू आर सेकेंड मैसेजर्स इन आर बॉडी दे आर प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ फॉस्फेटेडल आइनोसिटोल वेन एवर इट रिसीव एन इम्पल्स ओके Phosphatidyl linositol is also a type of phospholipid. So, what are we reading? Examples of different types of phospholipids and their applications in the body. Different types of phospholipids and their applications in the body. Phosphatidyl ethanolamine, phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl inositol, breaking down into diacyl glycerol and inositol triphosphate. Both of these are secondary messengers. Second messengers. What are second messengers? You'll read in physiology. Phosphatidyl glycerol. Phosphatidyl glycerol is also known as cardiolipin, and it is an important component of mitochondrial membranes. Any defect in cardiolipin is going to lead to a lot of uh, uh, diseases like uh, cardiac effects, a lot of uh, uh, defects. Okay, cardio. What is cardiolipin? Phosphatidyl glycerol. You should know what these names are. It can it can be asked in MCQs. Now, what are amphipathic lipids? Have any of do you have an idea? Amphipathic we have heard of a lot of time. Amphipathic means amphi means both. Pathy means faced. So these lipids have double face. Why double face? Because they have both polar. as well as non polar faces polar is what polar is hydrophilic isn't it polar is hydrophilic and non polar is hydrophobic or lipophilic okay got it so how are these molecules it is this has the polar head and a non polar tail polar head and a non polar tail now these amphipathic molecules what do they do how are they advantages because the, since they contain both faces so they can be present in they can be present in an environment they can fold they can fold themselves and present in an environment that can separate aqueous and non polar faces isn't it how in different formations see like the lipid bilayer where is this lipid bilayer present tell me guys in the comment section where is this lipid bilayer present this present in cell in membranes the phospholipids they arrange like this this one is this one is the non polar side isn't it see the non polar tail so this will be what this will be the non polar phase and this one is the polar head so this one is the aqueous phase they will face the aqueous phase here so what happens is they are they are very easily they can interlink aqueous and non aqueous phases polar and non polar phases so they are arranged like this another way in which they can be arranged is in the form of a micelle what does the how is the micelle this one is the aqueous phase outside and here it is the non polar phase where is the micelle present this non polar phase is what what is this non polar phase it is the lipid droplet the fat droplet isn't it and this aqueous phase is the digestive juice digestive juice present inside our body so now you know micelles what forms micelles in the in the emulsification of fats emulsification of fats micelles formed by the bile salts by the bile salts bile salts form micelles so what happens is these lipid droplets now since they are hydrophobic they cannot be acted upon by enzymes in an aqueous phase so these bile salts will emulsify the lipid droplets like this and form and form a micelle and now the digestive enzymes can very easily act upon them 
Understood? This is the advantage of amphipathic molecules. Now, this is extremely important, guys. They can form, they can also arrange in the form of a liposome. What is a liposome? Zome means any complex. So, this is a complex of lipid. How is this a complex of lipid? Two layers are there. Can you see? There are two layers. In the micelle, there was just one layer. Inside, there was a lipid droplet. Around it were, were, the amph were the amphipathic molecules. What is this? Here, the aqueous phase has been, the aqueous phase is trapped. Okay. And this is a non-polar phase in between. So, a non-polar phase in between two aqueous phases. Can you see how? Two aqueous phases are there. One is outside and then is the amphipathic molecule. Then is the non-polar phase. And then another amphipathic molecules that enclose an aqueous phase. Understood? So, this is a liposome. What are the applications of liposomes? What are the applications? Tell me. They can be carriers of drugs. Okay? Drugs can be there. Drugs can be instilled, incorporated inside the liposome and they can be transported. They can be used in cancer therapy, tissue targeted cancer therapy. They can be used in gene transfer. Genes can be embedded inside the liposome. Topical and transdermal delivery of drugs embedded in liposome. What is one important liposomal drug? You would have heard about it last year also. Very, very important drug. It, during the COVID wave also, this drug had gained prominence. Do you guys remember? Liposomal amphotericin B. Remember? Liposomal amphotericin B, isn't it? It is an antifungal drug. Do you guys remember or not? Liposomal amphotericin B. Because amphotericin B is highly nephrotoxic. Okay, it is very, very toxic to the kidneys. But if this drug is contained inside a liposome, then much of its, most of its toxicity is reduced. That is why amphotericin B is administered in the liposomal form. Okay, guys, extremely, extremely important. I hope you have understood. What are sphingomyelins? They are sphingosine plus fatty acid plus phosphoric acid plus choline. Okay, sphingosine plus fatty acid is called ceramide. All these you just have to remember. What is peroxidation of lipids? Peroxidation of lipids means auto-oxidation of lipids. That is oxidation of lipids inside the body. Okay, oxidation of lipids inside the uh, peroxisomes. What happens is it is a chain reaction and it produces free radicals. These free radicals are highly damaging. They cause oxidative stress. What do they do? It, free radicals are formed through three steps. This, I'm just going to give you an introduction here. We are going to read about this later on. I'm just going to give you an introduction. How? Due to any deleterious effect, once one free radical has been formed that contains an extra electron. Then there is propagation and then there is termination when two free radicals will combine together. Okay. Now, if you break, if you prevent free radicals from forming, if you prevent the step at initiation, it is called prevention of free radical formation. And if you break this chain propagation, it is called chain breakage. So, the antioxidants can either be preventive, that will prevent the first step. They are catalase and glutathione peroxidase. Glutathione peroxidase contains selenocysteine, isn't it? We have read about this. And the antioxidants can either be chain breaking, that is superoxide dismutase, that uh, prevents superoxide free radical formation, uh, that will reduce superoxide free radical formation, or vitamin E. Okay, that is tocopherol. Alright, so this is it for tonight uh, in the chapter of lipids. We'll break right now and we'll meet again uh, to discuss gluconeogenesis in the metabolism of glucose. Alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. I have tried and broken this down and uh, for a better understanding. Okay.
If you like this, then do subscribe to this channel for more such videos because we are going to focus on learning, on interactive, uh, comprehensive learning a lot. There's going to be an integrated session between physiology and biochemistry where I'll take biochemistry and Dr. Sheetal will take uh, physiology on the 7th of January at 9 p.m. for cell physiology. So please stay tuned to that and do share this amongst a lot of your friends so that uh, we get uh, even more uh, interactive students and there's a lot of flow of knowledge to and fro. Alright then, see you guys in the session on gluconeogenesis.